the warning will be a moment in time. We don't know when it's going to happen, but according to many saints and mystics in the Catholic Church, it will be a moment in time that will last about five to 15 minutes when everyone will see the state of their souls, when everyone will see their sins and the consequences of those sins. And it will start when the world will suddenly find itself in darkness, when the sun will not shine, the stars will not shine, the moon will not shine, and after that, a bright light, so bright that day will be brighter than day and night will be like day. And in the sky, Jesus will appear on the cross. And this is what Jesus showed St. Faustina. He will appear in the sky on the cross with his wounds. And from where his hands and his feet were nailed to the cross and from the wound in his side, bright rays of light will come and light up the world for a time. And when this happens, the rays will pierce every human soul on earth. It doesn't matter if they're atheist. It doesn't matter what religion they may practice, but everyone will have a, li a life review and everyone will be completely absorbed within themselves in this moment and everything on earth will stop. God will freeze time. Can God do this? Of course, God created time. God created the world. And so in this life review, which some people have already experienced and their stories are in the book that Ceci had me talk about, which is El Aviso, Testimonios y Profecías sobre la Iluminación de Conciencia. Entonces hay historias, there are stories in this book of people who've already experienced this and they know and we can see exactly what it will be like. It's amazing and it's a great grace and a source of tremendous and rapid conversion because everyone will know that there's a God, everyone will know that Jesus is real and people will know what their sins are and, and it will be, no one will be able to say, I don't know there's a God, I don't believe, how can I know? Because people say that today, right? They say, there's no proof. You don't have any proof that there's a God. People say, how can I know my sins? I don't know my sins. They will know. We will all know, those who experience it. And then after this life review, they will see not only their sins, but the consequences of each sin, which is a ripple effect. Just like goodness is a ripple effect. If I am nice to the lady at the counter at the store and she's having a bad day, perhaps that changes her whole day and she smiles at the next person and that next person was gonna commit suicide and so on and so on and so on. Goodness has a faster and better and stronger ripple effect than sin, praise God. Doesn't that make sense that that would be so? But sin also has its own ripple effect. If I'm nasty and I'm angry and short and curt with the lady at the counter, then she barks at the lady who barks at the person who is going to commit suicide and she goes home more sad, etc., etc. So that's how God sees sin, right? We can't see all that, but we will. And we would see it at death anyway, right? This moment of the warning is very similar to what's called the particular judgment that all of us will have at the end of our lives. After the warning, people will be given a period of time to make a very important choice for God or against God. Satan will be chained for 40 days. There will be no more normal temptation. So people will have free will that's completely free. And there will be a mass entrance of people who were formerly lukewarm Christians or who were of a different religion who say, what was this? I need help. Please, I don't know where to go. And Catholics will say, I know where to take you because the place we need to run to is the church, is the sacrament of reconciliation. Because people will know their sins and they'll want to confess. And so uh, one of the mystics, Father Michelle Rodrigue said, give the priest a sandwich because he's not going to have a moment to eat or even <laughs> leave to go to the bathroom. So 
Give the priest a sandwich because there will be long lines of confession, mass baptisms. We will need rosaries ready. We will need catechisms ready. We will need Bibles ready. We will need to know our faith. Can you imagine having someone come to us and say, hey, what just happened to me? And you say, I don't know. And, and, and then they say, how do I learn the truth? And you say, I don't know. Well, the Catechism of the Catholic Church and the Bible and the teachings of the Magisterium have everything every person needs to know about what is right, what is wrong, who God is, how He came to earth, how He loves us, how He wants to bring us to paradise, that there is a paradise, just the joy of our faith. So after the warning, some people will choose God, some people will, ch will not choose God. There will be a polarization between good and evil on earth, and there will be a mass entrance into the church. According to some of the mystics, those who live day to day in mortal sin and have no desire to repent, their hearts are completely hardened and they believe that they're fine, that there's nothing wrong with what they're doing, or they don't care. These people, when confronted in a very short span of earthly time with the sins of their entire life and the consequence of every sin of their entire life, it may be for some so shocking that their physical system may have a heart attack or a stroke or some kind of reaction. But even if they were to die from the shock, what we are told by the mystics is even that is a grace. Even that is a grace of mercy because they will have the chance to repent and choose God and be saved. For those of you in Latin American countries, in Mexico, in Paraguay, in Uruguay, in Chile, in, in, in watch CC. <laughs> I don't trust anyone else. <laughs> Mundo Católico. Tune in to Mundo Católico if you, if you can. Because um, yes, uh, unfortunately, and there's been more than one mystic who has been told this, that there will be a great uh, fooling of the masses. Can you imagine how much Satan will hate this event? Can you imagine how much, I mean, he's a liar. He's the prince of lies. That's what he does, is he lies. So he will use people who don't want to believe that it's real, who don't want to repent, who don't want to love more, to try to push the idea in through the camera, in through your television, in through your iPhones. Please turn them off. Not right now, but later. Turn them off. And don't listen to what the mass media of the major channels around the world are going to say because that is Satan's territory now and it will be even more so then. Okay? You are being lied to right now in many ways by the mainstream media and you will be severely lied to in the days to come. And this is just one of the most terrible lies that they're going to say. Be prepared for them to say that it was something technological, that it was something, was a mass hallucination, that it was something to do with the stratosphere and the sun. Be prepared for them to completely negate that it was God and that it was real. It will be a lie. Like anything else, uh, how, how does one prepare to see God? It's the same thing. And God, through His church and through the direct grace that He gives us because we are made in His very image, is always the same. It's been the same since Jesus came to earth. Come to me, repent and believe in the good news. Those are the first lines of the Gospel of Mark. Repent. The Kingdom of God is at hand. And so, the best way to repent with the graces, if the church is open to you now is to receive what is called make an appointment with the priest because you'll need more time than a normal confession do a general confession which is spend time in prayer in, in Eucharistic adoration if you can 
and ask God to show you any sins that are unconfessed that you haven't yet confessed in the sacrament. No, you cannot just tell God directly if you're a Catholic. That doesn't, that's not good enough. Jesus, through the apostles, said you, the sins that you forgive are forgiven them. The sins that you retain are retained. You go to the sacrament of reconciliation with true repentance they're forgiven. And then you do the penance that the priest gives you. And in reparation, you literally, maybe not with the same person in the same way, you can live a life that undoes the damage of sin in your life and in the world. You can live a life of reparation, which means you're repairing. You're helping Jesus repair everything. You're helping bring everyone to heaven with your very existence, which means live a holy life. Do a general confession. Bring all your unconfessed sins to a priest. Go to the sacrament of the Eucharist to receive the host, who is Jesus himself, as often as you possibly can. If masses are closed where you are and you don't have mass, make a spiritual communion. Look up what that is. Say the words of spiritual communion and ask Jesus to enter you fully into your heart, mind, and soul and body. Another thing, pray the rosary daily. The rosary is the second most powerful prayer next to the mass, fast. Nobody wants to do this one because <laughs> it's hard. And it, it basically casts out demons from ourselves and from whoever and whatever we're praying for. So two days a week, Wednesdays and Fridays are traditional fast days, fast on bread and water. Mary has said in Medjugorje, everyone but the sick must fast. And even if you're sick, you can fast by eating healthy things you don't like. Everyone can do some kind of mortification. She said, without prayer and fasting, prayer without fasting is like a bird trying to fly with just only one wing. We can only get so far in the spiritual life and we'll stop. We, we can't go any higher towards God. So fasting. The other thing is consecrate yourself and your families to the Virgin Mary. This is our greatest protection. She is the ark, like Noah's ark. She is the ark for our times. She is the safety that God has given us that we can enter. And to enter into her heart, there are, there are many consecrations you can do. The one that God asked me to write is called El Manto de Maria. Una consagración mariana para obtener ayuda celestial. And this is every day. It helps you to be a saint and to help save your families because you go through a virtue every day. You add a star to Our Lady's mantle. You meditate this beautiful meditation on a virtue and you add a star to her mantle. And you know how happy this makes her. And then you also, you say a rosary every day. You can do this alone or with your families or with a parish. Entire parishes are doing it together. Very, very powerful. Because you're praying for yourself, your family, and each other. You fast a little bit. Don't worry, it's not going to kill you. And you go to confession and then you consecrate yourself to the Virgin Mary. And that is the most beautiful thing because then you can sail in this ark amid stormy seas with her love and her protection covered by her mantle. So confession, general confession, go to monthly confession after that, Eucharist, fasting, daily prayer, rosary, consecrating yourself and your family to the Virgin Mary. Everyone will know that Jesus is God if they are open because it will be shown them the cross in the sky those rays coming down right into them and they will know through this image of Jesus on the cross that is the Catholic Church they will be shown that that is their home should they choose it that doesn't mean that they'll know everything about the history of the church or 
what the sacraments are or how does baptism work. All these things they'll have to be taught like every day in the world. That is why after the warning they will know that this is the place where they can find a home and where they can find safety for their souls. But they won't know all the details. They will only know the details that God is Jesus, that the church is their home, that they know their sins, and then it's up to the rest of us to do the regular acts and kindnesses of evangelization and teaching. We have to know our faith. We have to know the catechism of the Catholic Church. We have to be prepared with knowledge so that, because the priests aren't going to have time. They're going to be in long lines of confession. It's you and I who have to teach the people who are hungry to learn at that beautiful moment in time. There's no reason to live except to live for God. He created us to be in heaven with Him. We are here. We were created and born into this world to be like Jesus Christ. That's the reason why we were born. That's the reason why we were given life. That's the meaning of our lives. Please don't let the whole meaning of your life pass you by. Please don't think that life is about this body, that life is about makeup and exercise and, and getting the, the right partner and having the perfect house. And yes, these things, God wants to take care of us, but these things are not the end goal. Anything, St. Ignatius of Loyola said that if there's something in the world, whether it be a person or a thing, that brings you closer to God, by all means, be with that person or thing. But if there's a person or thing or things in your life that pull you away from God, then unless you're married to that person, which you should stay in that marriage, unless there's you know something the church says is, is okay to part, but unless there's something like that, you should not be with that thing, with that person, if something pulls you away from God, leave. Do not let anything, do not let any sin touch your soul. Fight. Fight for your soul. Fight for your salvation. Fight for the salvation of others. That is your job and my job. And every day is a beautiful fight. We climbing to heaven, nobody gets to heaven alone. Either someone is pulling us up or we're pulling someone up with us. But it's more like an escalator. You can go, but the escalator's going down. So if you stop fighting and you stop praying and you're going up a downward escalator, are you going to stay right there? You have to make the effort to walk up to heaven. You make the effort, Jesus grabs your hand, and he pulls you straight into paradise. That is what he wants for all of us.